Item number, SCP-006. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. Whereas the nature of SCP-006 does not warrant any extensive containment, a certain level of secrecy is necessary regarding the object's existence and properties, for obvious reasons. The following procedures are required not for personnel safety, but to deny or hide knowledge of SCP-006's effects from the personnel who interact with it. 1. All personnel interacting with SCP-006 in any physical way are required to wear modified Class 6 BNC suits. Before personnel are allowed to perform procedures, they must be briefed with material SCP-006-B or SCP-006-C. SCP-006-A briefing is the correct one, and is restricted to only those with O5 clearance. To ensure personnel are wearing suits properly, they are to be submerged into a pool of water. Any air bubbles spotted signify a leak in the suit. 2. Procedures with SCP-006 are to be carried out under extreme surveillance. In case of contact with SCP-006, the commander in charge will announce Procedure 006-G12, which the personnel have been briefed to believe to mean high toxicity is present and they must evacuate. 3. Any procedure in which liquid is acquired from SCP-006 must be approved by 305 level personnel. The liquid is to be transferred in a quad sealant container and under armed guard. 4. If at any time personnel come into contact with SCP-006 or liquid from SCP-006, they are to be confined and terminated after sufficient studies are done. Due to the nature of SCP-006, the most effective termination method is incineration. For full report, see file SCP-006-05. Description: SCP-006 is a very small spring located 60 kilometers west of Astrakhan. Foundation Command was aware of its existence since the 19th century, but were unable to secure it until 1991 due to political reasons. On the spot of the spring, a chemical factory has been constructed as a disguise, with the majority of laborers under Foundation and or Russian control. The liquid emitted from the spring has been chemically identified as simple mineral water in 1902, but has the unusual property of health. Ingesting the liquid produces the following properties in human beings. The ability to regenerate DNA damage by sufficient duplication, heightened excitement of cellular duplication, vastly improved abilities in the repair of damaged tissue, and a frightening increase in the effectiveness of the human immune system. Upon testing the liquid on animal subjects, hostile bacteria and viral agents were destroyed immediately. Many reptiles and birds were unaffected, while higher primates experienced the same benefits as humans. Item Number SCP-135 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-135 is to be contained in a partitioned plexiglass chamber, at least 7 meters to a side. All sections are to be completely sealed off from one another to avoid cross-contamination. SCP-135 itself is to be in a central section, with 1.0 to 1.5 square meters of floor space, with a 5 centimeter wide runoff trench around the perimeter that drains into a tank, the contents of which are to be piped into an incinerator at the end of every week. The remaining space in the containment chamber is to be used to house five chemical harvesting vats, one vat per partition section. A single access corridor is to lead from SCP-135 section to outside the chamber. No personnel are permitted within SCP-135's effect radius. All maintenance, taking of samples, etc. are to be carried out by remote control robots. Disciplinary measures need not be taken against personnel that violate this rule because the direct consequences of SCP-135's effects have been deemed consequence enough. Robots are to be maintained and cleaned by Level 1 personnel. Once a week, SCP-135 section is to be hosed down with solution U-82B until only its outer coating is visible. In emergencies, flamethrowers may be employed to reduce mass quickly. 
Due to the potential catastrophic effects in the event of cross-contamination, at no point are SCP-329 or SCP-427 to be contained within the same facility as SCP-135. Description: SCP-135 is a human female, age undisclosed, that promotes rapid, uncontrolled cell growth within a radius of 2.25 meters from itself. It remains rigidly in the fetal position and has never been observed to move. SCP-135's effect is carcinogenic to animal tissue and induces malignant neoplasia in plant and fungal tissues in 100% of recorded exposure cases, with severity and disorganization increasing exponentially with closer proximity to SCP-135. Within 0.1 meters, cells will not die, even under conditions where they would normally, causing SCP-135 to be steadily buried under a continually growing mass of plant matter, fungal matter, and microorganisms. This undying state extends to SCP-135 cells as well. SCP-135 has been shown to lack an epidermis, instead having a crust of mixed plant and fungal matter that has incorporated itself onto SCP-135's skin, interspersed with tumors and patches of raw dermis. SCP-135's lungs, diaphragm, and intestines are ruptured, and growth extends into the chest and abdominal cavities. It has been fitted with wide diameter plastic tubes for use in draining excess biomatter. The Foundation came into possession of SCP-135 after it and a surrounding ball of growth rolled off a cliff in the mountains, crushing a hiker on the trail below. Class B amnestics were administered to the civilians and law enforcement personnel involved, and the incident was covered up as having been caused by a pair of male goats that slipped and fell off the cliff edge during a dominance battle. Later examination of the growth revealed the partial skeleton of an adult human female, with osteosarcomata covering 1% of it. SCP-135 was found in the space between the skeleton's ribcage and pelvis. A viable DNA sample was recovered from the bone marrow of the pelvis, and testing confirmed that the skeleton belonged to SCP-135's biological mother. All personnel involved with SCP-135's retrieval and initial testing were later diagnosed with various forms of cancer. Out of the affected, only are still alive at the time of this writing. Attempts to terminate SCP-135 with sustained gunfire, flamethrowers, caustic materials, vacuum, and extreme pressure have all failed. Further termination attempts are forbidden by order of O5 due to SCP-135's potential uses in cultivating useful bacteria. EEGs confirm full brain activity. No attempts to communicate with SCP-135 are to be made at this time. Item Number SCP-201 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures No personnel are to come within 40 meters of SCP-201 at any time. Any and all work done with SCP-201 is to be performed via remotely controlled drone. Any personnel entering the containment area must be accompanied by two members of security. All personnel in containment area must wear a restraint harness with safety rope attached to the wall. Rope will allow access to within three meters of the minimum safe area. Exceeding this distance will result in physical removal from containment area and formal discipline. Those affected by SCP-201 are to have time and date of exposure, disappearance, and return along with any and all personal information, recorded in log Subjects who appear are to be recovered as soon as possible by agents, and debriefed immediately. Description: SCP-201 appears to be a very old piece of medical equipment, superficially resembling an IV stand, but with many other glass and metal items attached to it. SCP-201 stands 1.8 meters, or 6 feet tall, and has a mass of 36.5 kilograms, or 80 pounds. The metal portions are made of steel and brass, and various parts are connected with rubber tubing. The two IV bags are porcelain and are open at the top. SCP-201 was recovered in hospital in a long unused storage area. No record of SCP-201 appears anywhere in hospital records. Entering within 30 meters of SCP-201 can result in the subject being displaced into an alternate reality. This effect is apparently random, with some subjects remaining totally unaffected after exposure to SCP-201. 
Those affected will cease to exist in our reality between 1 and 48 hours after initial exposure. Durations of displacement vary between a few hours and upwards of 8 years. Time spent in this alternate reality can vary greatly from actual time elapsed in our reality. This alternate world appears identical to our own, with these exceptions. It is apparently in a state of constant twilight, with no sun or moon visible at any time. Large banks of very dense gray fog travel very low to the ground. These fog banks are unaffected by wind and can make exposed skin feel very sticky and dirty. There is no plant or animal life anywhere. All places of human habitation, including major cities, appear as if all life suddenly vanished in the same instant. Most, if not all, electrical systems appear to be broken or without power. The air will randomly take on a gray-brown tint, accompanied by strong wind. Subjects displaced to this alternate world report initial surprise and curiosity, which are shortly replaced with very strong feelings of loneliness and fear. The severity varies widely with individual subjects and with the time of displacement. Upon the end of displacement, subject will reintegrate from this alternate world to our own, which can cause a great deal of shock especially in urban settings. Most subjects who remain displaced for more than three months suffer lasting psychological damage, consistent with being sequestered within solitary confinement. In addition, reports of intermittent, fragmentary broadcasts have been returned by subjects appearing to repair power to media devices, such as televisions and radios. It is unclear if these are real or the product of the degraded mental states of those remaining long enough to complete said projects, but reports consistently resemble automated messages prepared by the Foundation in contingency for XK-class scenarios. Testing will commence if viable samples can be recovered. Item Number SCP-208 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Due to his docile manner, minimum containment procedures are to be applied to SCP-208. SCP-208 is to be housed in a 10 meter by 10 meter room, decorated in traditional Egyptian style, furnished with a single couch, and a stereo system, stocked with music of North African origin of any era. Surveillance is to be maintained during all movement outside of containment. SCP-208 is approved to operate at Site-17's medical wing. Description SCP-208 appears to be a short, stout man of Egyptian heritage, possessing a great deal of hair over much of his body. Along his brow is a mane similar to a lion's, in shape and color, which grows down to a significant beard. SCP-208 typically wears an Egyptian tunic, similar to that of typical Old Kingdom military, although occasionally this is replaced by modern military fatigues. SCP-208 is capable of inducing rapid cellular regeneration and reconfiguration within organic life forms, which amounts to the ability to quickly and effectively heal most physical ailments. This is performed by a unique form of electromagnetic radiation released from SCP-208's body, which acts on a wavelength that oscillates with four degrees of freedom rather than three. The electromagnetic radiation displays unusual pulse phenomena. Furthermore, the energy of the radiation decays over distance in a fashion incompatible with the inverse squared model. This radiation is emitted from SCP-208 naturally in small doses and can be released in greater amounts when focused. Personnel have noted that being near SCP-208 provokes a feeling of wellness and ease, making him quite popular with the security staff. This radiation also possesses the ability of warding off ill intent, to the point of acting as a physical barrier to naturally malicious beings. What causes this is unknown, but MRI scanning of Class D personnel taken from death row in the presence of SCP-208 detected an unidentifiable pattern of neurons firing. This activity coincided with a feeling of extreme unease on behalf of the subject, as he tried to flee the secure containment chamber. It is speculated that the neural activity activates the acute stress response in human subjects, stimulating the fight-or-flight instinct. What causes it to affect non-human subjects 
is still unknown. Despite his appearance, SCP-208 is jovial and friendly to staff and enjoys the company of others. Due to his good behavior and willingness to cooperate, SCP-208 has been permitted access to most common areas within Site-17. Known to most staff as Bess, SCP-208 has been adopted as an assistant in the medical wing of Site-17, a position he seems to have fit into naturally. SCP-208 is also fond of children and has been noted to be very protective of what he considers the innocent. The only thing to inspire aggressive behavior from SCP-208 has been snakes, for which he has expressed a deep hatred. SCP-208 was originally discovered in Egypt during a search for SCP along the Nile River. While SCP agents began digging into sediment in the Nile Delta, Dr. spotted a foot sticking out of the riverbed. Further excavation revealed that it was connected to a great block of granite. Recovered and brought to Sector SCP-208 was exhumed from the stone after surprising a researcher who discovered that he was still alive. After examination had been concluded, SCP-208 was moved to Site-17 as a safe class SCP. Addendum 208-A Comparison testing of SCP-500 showed that it still serves as a much more effective cure. SCP-208 commented that he still tells better jokes. Item Number SCP-212 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Use of SCP-212 must be cleared by the current containment site's chief medical officer. Any subjects undergoing operation by SCP-212 must submit to full physical and psychological testing, both before and after exposure. Resistance to testing will result in termination of subject. All personnel are to keep at least 1.5 meters or 5 feet from SCP-212 when not in operation. Armed personnel are authorized to use whatever force deemed necessary to prevent unauthorized exposure. Should any personnel accidentally become exposed to SCP-212, full quarantine, testing, and judicial review will be initiated as soon as the subject is released by SCP-212. Description SCP-212 is a large medical device with three large robotic arms. The arms have an extremely diverse array of attachments, but no storage area or power source has yet been found. Attachments slide into and out of the arms as needed, with over 500 different attachments documented. SCP-212 is made of plastic, steel, and other common materials. In-depth analysis is pending, as any attempt by mechanical means causes violent action from SCP-212, and attempts by any biological means normally results with subjects improvement. When exposed to living tissue, the arms of SCP-212 will rapidly move to grab and restrain it. SCP-212 will then begin to improve said tissue. This process is extremely fast, but SCP-212 does not inject any anesthetic or replace any blood lost. The process has been described as excruciatingly painful and can result in the death of the subject at a rate of 47%. Wounds made by SCP-212 are closed with standard surgical sutures and a chemical sealant that is not yet fully understood. Improvements that have been observed include lining of joints with graphite, replacement of biological organs with artificial ones, addition of metal plates to bones, addition of new or duplicate organs, and replacement of teeth with small serrated steel bands, among many others. SCP-212 has been shown to be able to totally reconfigure an organism. The improvements appear to be random and can sometimes be detrimental or fatal, as illustrated by one subject's complete loss of bone marrow and its replacement by a gel that is still under study. Subjects wishing to undergo exposure from SCP-212 are to be advised that the process is extremely invasive and that no predictions on improvements can be made. SCP-212 Upgrade Log Record of Exposure to SCP-212 Attention! Any and all exposure to SCP-212 is to be recorded and logged. Unreported exposure to SCP-212 will be met with termination. 
All subjects willingly exposed to SCP-212 must have O5 command approvals, as well as that of site medical staff. Subject Agent 28 years old, 64 kilograms, 183 centimeters tall, African American descent. Description of upgrades Lower jawbone replaced by super dense ceramic jaw, teeth replaced with blades made of the same material. Spine removed and replaced with synthetic polymer. Replacement spine grafted to base of skull. Ribcage and pelvis coated with thin layer of ceramic. Lungs, eyes, and liver removed and replaced after cleaning. Subject status. Active duty. Notes. SCP-212 will appear to clean some organs or tissues. It will run several attachments over the tissue each of which will spray, scan, cut, or otherwise interact with the tissue before replacing it. When tested, these cleaned tissues appear totally free of genetic defects and appear younger than the surrounding tissues. Subject Dr. 42 years old, 62 kilograms, 170 centimeters, Caucasian, British, descent. Description of Upgrades Teeth replaced with super dense ceramic. Feet amputated at the ankle, replaced by a thin plastic latticework with several pads on the bottom. These pads are capable of sticking to any solid surface and can carry up to 225 kilograms. Bone marrow removed and replaced with a blue gel. Heart, eyes, liver, and kidneys removed and cleaned. Several metal devices inserted into the brain for unknown purpose. Subject status. Subject died during the removal of bone marrow. Foot pads removed and are currently under study. Subject. Agent AA. Personal data expunged. Suffered severe injuries resulting in traumatic amputation of all four limbs and removal of spleen, left kidney, right lung, and left eye. Cranial trauma caused by shard of circuitry piercing skull and entering left frontal lobe of brain. Description of Upgrades Contrary to expectations, SCP-212 did not remove the shard of metal from subject's brain, instead spending approximately seven minutes analyzing the circuitry with a variety of lenses, probes, and sensors, before apparently determining that the foreign body could be left in place. SCP-212 then proceeded to integrate said circuitry into subject's frontal lobe more fully, utilizing tracery made of room temperature superconductors. SCP-212 ended by administering an unknown chemical that immediately placed the subject in a coma, then shut itself down. No attempts were made to replace severed limbs or repair damage to bodily organs, aside from normal cleaning. Subject status. As of subject remains in a chemically induced coma in stable condition. Foreign circuitry in brain appears to be spreading at a geometric rate. Estimate complete replacement of biological brain tissue and data expunged. Subject Agent 34 years old, 112 kilograms, 176 centimeters, Caucasian, German descent. Description of upgrades Removal of stomach, intestines large and small, liver, and kidneys. Organs were placed with two sacks of synthetic tissues attached to the esophagus. Esophagus lined with the same tissue. Sacks produce an acid capable of breaking down steel and transfer all nutrition directly to the bloodstream. This process produces no waste and any indigestible matter is expelled up the esophagus and out the mouth. Eyes were placed with optic sensor pads capable of seeing invisible, infrared, and ultraviolet light spectrum. Hands removed at the wrist, and each replaced with eight metallic tentacles, each measuring 3.8 centimeters long. Subject status. Medical leave to allow adjustment to new internal structures. Subject. D-class. Serial number undisclosed. 23 years old. 62 kilograms. 178 centimeters. Caucasian. American. Descent. Previously exposed to SCP-217 and decontaminated once the virus had run its course, full mechanical conversion achieved. 
Description of upgrades. Data expunged. Subject status. Subject escaped containment, overpowering two armed personnel and effortlessly bypassing several security measures. Subject recaptured after two hours, having caused several casualties and injuries, as well as deactivating data expunged. Once recaptured, subject requested SCP classification, presumably in an attempt to avoid termination. Request was denied, and subject was dismantled. Components were incinerated following examination and documentation. Subject, Agent 25 years old, 93 kilograms, 188 centimeters, African American descent. Description of upgrades. Skin replaced with nanomaterial mesh of thick tubes coated in microscopic barbs. Tips of fingers and toes replaced with carbon claws, about 8 centimeters long. Limb bones restructured for quadrupedal stance. Heart and lungs replaced by single organ, with a second similar organ as backup. Digestive system cleaned and shortened significantly. Left eye replaced with ultrasound sensor. Subject status. Stable, but behaving erratically. Contained pending psychological analysis. Subject. Doctor. 26 years old. 142 kilograms, 200 centimeters, multiracial descent. Subject was rendered fully blind due to accidental exposure to SCP. Description of upgrades. Removal of both eyes. Orbits widen to meet and form a single oval cavity. Cavity is lined with metallic structures resembling large cilia. Amputation of both hands. Stumps fused together and several small limbs resembling crab pincers grafted to the forearms, in no apparent pattern. Teeth removed for cleaning. Teeth with fillings discarded. Remainder replaced. Subject status. Deceased. Subject had begun undergoing medical imaging when he began to suffer extreme pain, describing the sensation as, it tastes all wrong. The cilia-like structures then reshaped into sharp points and extended rapidly in length, many piercing the subject's brain. The gripper limbs continued independent movement for several hours, until subject was incinerated. Subject D5354, 22 years old, multiracial descent. Subject was scheduled for disciplinary termination and had consumed a last meal consisting of seafood. Subject was already deceased when exposed to SCP-212. Description of Upgrades after spending four minutes analyzing and probing subject, SCP-212 dissected subject, carefully removing the stomach and intestinal tract. Stomach was then opened, and a bioluminescent lobster-like organism was constructed from its contents. Subject status. After removing and altering subject's stomach contents as described above, rest of subject's remains were discarded. Subject. Mummy of Intef II. Pharaoh of the 11th Dynasty of Egypt, circa 2063 BCE. The mummy had been collected during a research expedition by the Foundation's predecessor entity in the early 19th century. Description of Upgrades SCP-212 spent 25 minutes analyzing subject, then ceased activity without having altered subject. Following this, Dr. Morrison directed that the four canopic jars that were collected from Intef II's tomb also be placed in the containment chamber. SCP-212 then reactivated and used a scalpel and a heating tool to make minor alterations to four amulets in the mummy's wrappings before again ceasing activity. Subject status, apparently unchanged, except that the aggregate mass of the subject appears to have decreased slightly. Subject. D-5442, 27 years old, Japanese-American descent. Description of Upgrades SCP-212 removes the subject's thumbs and nose. It scans for three minutes, before replacing the nose with a silicone version and implanting a thin plastic tube within the nasal cavity, coated in an unknown blue mucus. Subject Status Subject struggled to breathe and described a pleasant smell the subject expired one hour later from asphyxiation. Subject A white laboratory rat, Rattus norvegicus. Description of upgrades The tail was removed, 
and SCP-212 began to alter the skeletal structure to resemble that of a bipedal organism. All organs were then removed, except the lungs and heart. The additional space was filled with a white paste, which hardened. Subject status. Remains were incinerated after analysis. Subject. The corpse of MTF New 7 Officer Harold Goldman, Caucasian American descent, mauled by an instance of SCP, which had left a large opening in the chest and abdomen. Several organs were devoured by the SCP instance. Description of Upgrades SCP-212 scanned the subject for 10 minutes before sewing the remaining pieces of intestines back together and repairing sections with a patch of synthetic tissues. SCP-212 then ceases activity after probing the areas where organs should be. Subject Status Incinerated Item Number SCP-269 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-269 is stored in a standard Safe Class Secure Locker at Site-19. Experimentation with SCP-269 may only be performed on Class D personnel, and only with prior approval from at least two Level 3 senior researchers. Description SCP-269 is an unmarked bracelet composed of red jade, approximately 11 centimeters in diameter in its inactive state. SCP-269 exhibits unusual resilience, as all attempts at obtaining a sample have failed to date as well as constantly maintaining a temperature of approximately 36 degrees Celsius, regardless of ambient room temperature. When placed on the wrist or ankle of a living human subject, SCP-269 contracts to fit tightly but comfortably over the extremity. Over the next 24 hours, SCP-269 extends flexible tendrils that integrate with its host's circulatory system through the ulnar and radial arteries a process described by test subjects as being painless, but mildly uncomfortable. Upon completion of this process, SCP-269 cannot be removed from its host without amputating the affected hand or foot. Once SCP-269 is fully integrated, it will begin to filter substances from its host's bloodstream. How this is done is not fully understood, but the process occurs over three stages. In the first stage, SCP-269 will begin to filter contaminants and infectious agents, such as bloodborne bacteria and viruses. This includes many disease agents that are currently incurable, such as the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. SCP-269 appears to be capable of identifying and isolating infected blood cells from healthy ones. As this process often results in a general improvement in the health of the host, the host may resist attempts to have SCP-269 removed. This stage typically lasts anywhere from one week to one month. In the second stage, SCP-269 will begin filtering components of the host's immune system from the bloodstream. Because SCP-269 continues to filter infectious agents from the host's body, this generally goes unnoticed, unless a blood analysis is performed. Stage 2 lasts anywhere from one month to six months. In the final stage, SCP-269 will begin to filter vital blood components, such as red blood cells and platelets, causing an onset of acute anemia and thrombocytopenia. Hosts that reach stage 3 quickly weaken and will invariably expire within one week unless massive blood transfusions are given. SCP-269 came to the Foundation's attention following reports that a civilian, one Mr. had been cured of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, and died shortly thereafter. SCP-269 was discovered attached to Mr. Rick's wrist and was secured by Foundation agents after it was found that SCP-269 had integrated into his circulatory system. Investigation into the precise function and origin of SCP-269 is ongoing. Item Number SCP-348 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-348 is to be kept in a standard locker at Site-19. Personnel wishing to conduct tests involving SCP-348 are to obtain Level 3 or higher authorization 
and present a detailed list of intended test subjects. Description SCP-348 is a white ceramic bowl, patterned with light blue flowers, measuring approximately 20 centimeters in diameter and 9 centimeters high. While no maker's marks are present, the Chinese characters for thinking of you are etched into the side of the bowl. When in the presence of an individual afflicted with a minor ailment or injury, i.e. mild cough, runny nose, or scrapes, SCP-348 will fill with soup. While the ingredients present within the soups produced by SCP-348 vary, young subjects, individuals between the ages of 4 and 18, have consistently stated that they enjoyed the meal, sometimes stating that it reminds them of their parents cooking. Subjects will finish the soup found in SCP-348 if allowed. Children who eat from SCP-348 several times often express a feeling of contentment, stating that though they are eating by themselves, they do not feel lonely. Addendum SCP-3481 SCP-348 was acquired shortly after rumors of a child living in apparently possessing remarkable recovery abilities came to the Foundation's attention. Investigation revealed that the child in question originally discovered SCP-348 in the attic of their house and had come to rely on it after receiving insufficient attention from their parents. The child's parents, both full-time workers, refused to comment on their relationship with the child. Resulting testing involving children was carried out under the guise of surveys to gauge the success of new food items offered at public schools. Addendum SCP-3482 It has been noted that, occasionally, after soup produced by SCP-348 has been consumed, a message will materialize on the inside of the bowl. Words produced on the inside of the bowl appear to be printed on the ceramic consistent with existing markings. The message that appears will be in the language most familiar to the drinker of the soup. After several hours, or when SCP-348 produces another meal, the words disappear. Testing Log SCP-348-1323 Subject 8-year-old female, afflicted with sore throat. Brief background Lives with and is on good terms with both parents. Notes Subject took approximately 30 minutes to consume soup. Remarked later that sore throat seemed to have gone away. Subject. Ten-year-old male. Recently injured self while biking. Minor bruising. Brief background. Lives with both parents. Often argues with both. Notes. Message appeared. Don't forget to brush. Subject. Eleven-year-old male. Afflicted with slight cold. Brief background. Lives with foster parents. Notes. Message appeared. I'm glad you're happy. Subject. Nine-year-old female. Afflicted with slight cold. Brief background. Lives with both parents. Said to be prone to tantrums. Notes. Nothing of note occurred during or immediately after testing. Subject stated while she didn't particularly care for the soup after tasting it, she still wanted to eat it. Follow-up investigations revealed that the subject recovered from the cold faster than was expected. Subject: Six-year-old male, recently injured self while playing with friends. Minor scrapes and scratches. Brief background. Parents divorced. Currently lives with mother. Notes. Message appeared. I'm sorry, son. Subject: Seven-year-old female, afflicted with cough. Brief background. Lives with mother and grandmother. Father deceased. Traffic accident. Notes. Message appeared. I love you. Addendum. SCP-3483. Testing has revealed that in the event that someone older than 18 years of age attempts to consume soup created by SCP-348, the individual will find that they are less inclined to finish the meal. Some such individuals will remark that something is missing. Most will simply state that the soup was nothing out of the ordinary. Further studies carried out with older subjects indicate that though messages will appear for individuals older than 18, the appearance of the messages is worn and faded. Testing Log SCP-348-2635 Note It was observed that though over 100 subjects were tested, only four individuals received messages from SCP-348. Subject 30-year-old female, 
afflicted with headache. Brief background. On poor terms with both parents. Refused to accept father's offer for career training. Currently lives alone. Notes. Message appeared. Why? Subject. 35-year-old male. Afflicted with cough. Brief background. Parents divorced. Visits father and stepmother once a month. Does not visit mother on her insistence. Notes. Message appeared. It'll get better. Subject. 40-year-old female. Afflicted with sore throat. Brief background. Moved away and became estranged from both parents. Nevertheless, sent money and took care of senior housing for both. Father recently passed away. Notes. Subject noted the soup tasted initially bitter, but was fulfilling in the end. Message appeared. Thank you. Subject. 40-year-old male, afflicted with minor backaches. Brief background. Murdered father approximately one year ago. Notes. Subject tasted and then refused to consume soup, complaining about the taste. Subject later developed mild stomach pains. After the contents of SCP-348 were disposed of, SCP-348 immediately filled with what appeared to be salt water, which remained for three hours before disappearing. Subject. 45-year-old male, afflicted with aches due to arthritis. Brief background. Happily married, lives with wife and children. Visits father once a week, with family. Mother deceased. Notes. Message appeared. I'm proud of you. Despite the extensive data gathered in testing, it is unknown whether the messages that SCP-348 has manifested originate from the fathers of the subjects, or SCP-348 itself. Addendum. SCP-3484. SCP-348 was once used in a test involving a 60-year-old man suffering from a terminal illness. The subject, a grandfather with multiple grandchildren, stated that the soup produced by SCP-348 was the best he'd ever tasted. Following the test, the subject reported feeling a sense of satisfaction and noted that the pain caused by the illness seemed to have faded. The subject passed away peacefully a week later. Item Number SCP-427 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-427 displays no means of self-locomotion or malicious intent at this time and requires only minimal containment. Due to SCP-427's adverse effects, only medical staff of Class 3 or above may handle or utilize it. All personnel using SCP-427 must record their total time using it in order to avoid unwanted mutations. Instances of SCP-427-1, colloquially referred to as Flesh Beasts, created by SCP-427, must be killed immediately, as it is impossible to communicate with or experiment on them safely. For this reason, Instances of SCP-427-1 are classified as Keter. Description SCP-427 is a small spherical ornately carved locket made of a polished silver material. The ornate carvings do not seem to serve any function. It is unknown whether SCP-427's outer casing was crafted by sentience or not. Its circumference at its widest point is roughly 3 centimeters. SCP-427 was created after placing a pill of SCP-500 in the input booth of SCP-914 and using the Fine setting. It displays no unusual activity when closed. When opened, a small glowing orb is visible at the center. The orb emits no radiation or energy, aside from the visible spectrum. When SCP-427 is opened and exposed to biological tissue, it rapidly regenerates cellular damage, and somehow is able to purge invading compounds or infections. As a standard of measure, the common cold takes 3 to 10 days to be worked through the human immune system, and eventually removed. In the presence of an opened SCP-427, this time is reduced to 2 to 4 minutes. Its healing abilities are directional, so anything not in line of sight with the central orb experiences no effects. However, 
Long-term exposure produces a significant health hazard. As the locket heals damage, it optimizes the body's natural systems. Resistance to disease and toxins is increased by 500% compared to accepted LD50 or death rate values after a total of 10 minutes of exposure and 1000% after 15. After 15 minutes of exposure, muscular systems begin optimizing, increasing strength and pain tolerance by 200 to 300 percent. All other systems continue to optimize. Class D personnel exposed to the device for over an hour total began mutating into a shapeless mass of tissue. The conversion time accelerates with continued exposure to SCP-427. The Flesh Beasts so named due to their appearance, created by SCP-427, are incredibly aggressive, attacking any and all personnel on site with lethal results. They are highly resistant to most known weaponry, but can be disabled with sufficient shock trauma or heat in excess of 1100 degrees Celsius, 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Intelligence cannot be accurately gauged but mapping of biological enhancement of the brain as a direct relationship with optimization of other systems suggests intelligence could exceed levels measured in humans when fully transformed. SCP-427 is currently being used as a partial replacement for SCP-500 pills, as it can cure almost anything SCP-500 is able to. All optimizations imparted by SCP-427 are cumulative. Oversight has deemed the side effects an acceptable risk, but users must carefully record their total exposure time, as sufficient mutations are grounds for termination. Item Number SCP-474 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Portions of SCP-474 which exist inside of physical space are secured within Foundation-made pill bottles. Bottles are stored inside a locked medicine cabinet, itself located within an anomaly storage vault. All non-hazardous recordings of SCP-474 audio are on the research team's shared hard drive space, with any cognitohazardous audio being stored on a secure server with restricted access. Foundation personnel embedded in educational systems are to encourage zero-tolerance drug policies on college campuses in order to maximize the possibility of SCP-474 instances being discovered. Agents under the cover of being law enforcement agencies are to seize these whenever possible and destroy them if deemed unrecoverable. Description SCP-474 denominates pills produced for non-medicinal purposes by Alex Silva University in apparent collaboration with the Oaniri Collective. Each occurrence of SCP-474 is blue and analysis has shown it to be chemically identical to generic sugar-based placebo pills. When ingested, SCP-474 will affect the consumer until the next time they enter REM sleep. Audio broadcast from Alexilva University will begin playing through their mouths, consisting of station breaks and notes associated with that campus's radio station. This spoken word programming will be in the subject's native language, with mute subjects mouthing words and DHH individuals enunciating as they would attempting speech normally. Although music is frequently referenced, it has not been broadcast audibly. Affected individuals who remember their dreams will report them as having a heavy musical theme. Dreamers, even musicians, have been unable to replicate the sounds they heard, but have universally described it as some variation of trippy. The speaker within Alexilva appears to have some connection with the individuals they broadcast through, as multiple subjects tuned into the station in their dreams will have identical muscle contractions and eye movement while being affected. See Addendum 474-B for more information. SCP-474 was discovered after a local broadcast news station and aired a story about a drug craze at a local community college campus. 65 instances of SCP-474 were recovered from various members of the student body. Since then, approximately 50 caches of SCP-474 are recovered annually from various college and university campuses in North Africa, North America, Europe, Eurasia, Oceania, and Australia. 
Foundation personnel working on SCP-474 who receive recruitment literature from Alex Silva University in their dreams are to report to their supervisors immediately upon waking. Addendum 474A Documentation associated with SCP-474 Alex Silva University proudly proclaims another triumph in their successful working relationship with the Oaniri Collective Educational Animus, a method for mentally crowded students to let airwaves flow into their ears and put to good use that time which is wasted sleeping. University elders pray to the gods that this provides an outlet for student stress, and as there are no known side effects mixing with other school-sponsored narcotics, it can be acquired from any nurse station. Alex Silva University Staff Oaniri Dreams of Radio Eat a pill before dream time Enjoy dream programming Advertising is provided for those in the waking world. Don't mind them. Keep rocking the dream. Addendum 474B Testing logs of SCP-474 audio phenomenon Subject intake D0327, two SCP-474 pills prior to sleeping. Result, play recorded file. DJ Ote here with VVAUR, Alexa University, 21-8 BCFM, radio with a reason. Reminder that the Visigoths will engage the Eastside Ostrogoths tonight in gladiatorial combat. It's the last chance to run for student body, senate, consul, or tribune election, so if you're interested, be sure to register. Now for a wonderful selection of Hannibal and the Baraka Rakas. End of recording. Note. Subject reported dreaming of roaming swamps on an elephant while dancing while tearing their eyes out, which was reported as enjoyable. Subject intake. D0327, two SCP-474 pills prior to sleeping. Result. Play recorded file. DJ Ote here, VVAUR, Alexa University Radio, 21-8 BCFM, radio, with a reason. Viscera clean up detention tonight for you-know-who. Be there before sundown. Drug dispensary from the nurse opens in the morning. And the first debates of the Tribunate election are going to be in the forum tonight. Gonna leave you off with a wonderful sampling of the Etruscan Way. Hey, hey. End of recording. Note. Subject noted songs in an incomprehensible language sung to them as they explored a hilly area, before waking up when a storm began forming above them. Subject intake. D0327. Two SCP-474 pills prior to sleeping. Result. Play recorded file. Just wanted to remind everybody that tryouts for the Visigoth practice squad are tonight. Bring your own armor, as none will be provided. In the morning, you can pick up your chariot decals for those of you who paid in advance. And the last day to drop classes is approaching, so check with your tutors that all is well in the house of Gradebook. End of recording. Note. Subject was not able to remember their dreams. Subject intake. D0327. Two SCP-474 pills prior to sleeping. Result. Play recorded file. Hey everybody, DJ Ote here with some consular election announcements I'm contractually obliged to read. First one's up from Polybus Maximus, who pledges to clean up the streets and the Tudor sheets. Vote P for consul. Then we got his opponent Tacitor, who says you won't have to quote laws with your sword. T for consul. Tacitor, the candidate of men with soft swords and hard heads. Coming up, we got springtime for Caesar in the Romulus Orchestra Band. Coming right at ya. End of recording. Note. Last known broadcast of DJ Ote. Real name believed to be Polybus Maximus. Subject intake. D0412. Two SCP-474 pills prior to sleeping. Result. This is DJ Livia's VVAUR Alexa uh, Reason Radio. I'm saddened today to report the passing of our friend DJ Ote. His chariot had been found with slashed tires and a large brick was dropped on his horse. Ote's body has not been found, however, mo most of his blood was. For any who may be listening, we here at VVAUR beg you not to act out against citizens, even those who speak out of turn. 
End of recording. Note. The following note was regurgitated by D0412 following the conclusion of the test. Although these are rainy days for all those who love peace on campus, the threat of political violence will not prevent the normal carrying out of campus activities. The announcement of consular election results will be announced on the campus forum. Simultaneously, funeral services to those who perished due to violence against citizens will be held on the adjacent green. Beloved campus figure Polybus Maximus will be put to rest. Along campus, Maniple security will be present to prevent any violence between those groups. So please, feel free to safely attend either event. Alex Silva University staff. Subject Intake D0412 2 SCP-474 pills prior to sleeping Result After several hours of dead air emanating from D0412's mouth, along with distant sounds of human screams and mayhem, an individual believed to be Maximus Thrax, the captain of the Visigoth Gladiator's combat sport team, entered the station and proclaimed this message. If anyone listens to this, Thrax, your team captain, commands your attention. The university is burning. It's the action... It's actions like this that remind me why I picked up the sword. Call for help. Cowards. Chance to cut down political types don't come every moon. Let's go home carrying our shields or carried in them. End of recording. Note. Shortly after the broadcast ended... D-0412 spontaneously suffered dozens of simultaneous spear wounds. Testing has been suspended until a cost-benefit analysis of potential D-Class resources being lost can be performed. Item Number SCP-500 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-500 must be stored in a cool and dry place, away from bright light. SCP-500 is only allowed to be accessed by personnel with Level 4 Security Clearance to prevent misapplication. Description SCP-500 is a small plastic can, which at the time of writing contains 47 red pills. One pill, when taken orally, effectively cures the subject of all diseases within two hours, exact time depending on the severity and amount of the subject's conditions. Despite extensive trials, all attempts at synthesizing more of what is thought to be the active ingredient of the pills have been unsuccessful. Note from Dr. Klein. SCP personnel below level 3 are now banned from handling SCP-500. This is not to be used to cure a hangover. Get AIDS and then ask permission. Request 51774K. Dr. 500022F has requested one SCP 500 pill for testing with SCP 38. Request has been approved. Request 51862B. Dr. Gears has requested one SCP 500 pill for testing in SCP 914. Request has been approved. Request 52354 F. Dr. has requested one SCP-500 pill for testing with SCP-253. Request denied. Request 55667E. Dr. Gibbons has requested two pills of SCP-500 for his personal med kit. Request denied. Addendum 501. Two pills have been authorized for use with SCP-8. As a result of conducting a series of tests on Class D subjects infected with SCP-8, it appears that even in the most advanced stages of the disease, one whole pill will accomplish full recovery. Number of pills is 57 at the time of writing. Dr. 500-0021-D Addendum 502 One pill has been authorized for use with SCP-409. SCP-500 was tested on Subject 409-D5, who was exposed to the effects of SCP-409. Complete recovery accomplished. See Addendum 409-1. Number of pills is 56 at the time of writing. Dr. 500-0021-D. Addendum 504. Request 51774-K approved. 
Five pills have been used in experimentation with SCP-38. It has been determined that SCP-38 is capable of duplicating SCP-500. However, the success of the duplicated pills is limited. The duplicated pills are only effective in curing the subject 30% of the time, with chance of successful healing dropping as time since cloned increases. In 60% of the cases where the infection is permanent, symptoms of infection remain, though further infestation is neutralized. Repeated dosing with SCP-38 cloned pills is recommended for all personnel, suffering from incurable conditions, as supply of SCP-500 remains extremely limited. All five used samples of SCP-500 were returned. Number of pills is 56 at the time of writing. Addendum 505 During experiments with SCP-38, one pill was stolen by personnel D to reportedly, quote, cure a hangover, end quote. Stricter controls for samples of SCP-500 given to other projects is suggested. Personnel D it has been terminated. Number of pills is 55 at the time of writing. Addendum 506. One pill has been used with SCP-2314. Number of pills is 54 at the time of writing. Addendum 507. One pill has been used for Experiment 447A. Number of pills is 53 at the time of writing. Addendum 508. One pill has been used with SCP-208. Number of pills is 52 at the time of writing. Addendum 509. Request 51862B approved. One pill of SCP-500 is placed within SCP-914, with the setting at Fine. Resulting object classified as SCP-427. Number of pills is 51 at the time of writing. Addendum 510. Five pills have been taken for the Olympia Project, although only two were used. The remaining three will be returned shortly. Upon return, number of pills will be 49. Addendum 511. Two pills have been used for Experiment 217. Number of pills is 47 at the time of writing. Addendum 512. Request to have SCP-500 investigated for mental compulsion leading to obsessive fixation denied for triviality. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.